If you are looking for Singapore share ideas to get dividends, I have 10 for you today. Not just that, I'll be doing the heavy lifting and categorizing them into what I don't like, what I think is fairly priced, and if you stay right to the end, what I think may be undervalued. Now, I've actually seen this question before, which 6% investment are you referring to it feels like many don't believe singapore shares can deliver a good rate of return so challenge accepted i do indeed like digging around for gems in the singapore stock market so if you like that effort smash the like button for me and with that let's roll in the intro video Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let me start with this category on two names that I don't really like personally. But having said that, they have both displayed you know, share price growth over the last five years. And let's start with the first name in this category, who is Yang Zijiang Shipbuilding. You know, Yang Zijiang is highly cyclical, that industry. In my opinion, it's pretty hard to observe competition from Korea and China because I'm not in the shipbuilding industry myself. Unless you're in the industry, I guess you're also probably guessing from analyst report. But if you see in terms of share price, Yang Zijiang has delivered 54% gain over the last 5 years, correct? And a healthy dividend of 3.9%. Now this dividend track record is very strong, that's why I have it in this category. But because I don't quite understand the industry and I think there are bars and booms in this cycle which is not easy to catch, it is not my most favourite cup of tea. With that, let's move on to the second name in this category, who is someone that is well known, especially if you already have Singapore stocks. That company is SGX. Now, SGX has delivered 17% over the last five years. Not just that, a 3.61% dividend yield right now. While many people feel SGX has a monopoly, I do feel that they face disruptions from dark pools, blockchains, overseas exchanges, etc. etc. So I'm not too excited about that supposed monopoly. That's why I have it in this category that I don't quite like personally. But having said that, SGX has been a strong dividend payer. Look at this chart over here. Fantastic, correct? If you have invested 10 years ago, you'll only be getting 27 cents. But right now, it's 30 plus cents and hopefully still growing. So regardless of what I think, SGX shareholders have been rewarded well. And maybe you've been one that have benefited from their right. And as always, if you are, leave in the comment sections if you have a personal story to share. With this category out of the way, let's move on to the second category, which are companies that I believe are fairly valued right now. And I have five names for you. Let's start with the first one, who is a household name. Maybe you even live on top of one of them in a HDB flat. This company is now then Sing Xiong. Sing Xiong is a very steady dividend payer. As you can see in the track record, they've been growing their dividends because they've been opening more outlets and each of them have been run well operationally in my opinion. Not just that, in 2020-2021, they've seen bumper results simply because many people are cooking more from home and not traveling overseas. Seng Song has rewarded shareholders with a 76% gain in the last 5 years for its share price. Wow. And from reports, Seng Song bosses are very generous people which is good to know. But I do want to criticize one thing which is their online system. In a previous tutorial, I've suggested that Seng Song's online system was very primitive, especially back in 2020 where we all needed online ordering. I observed some improvements, but I think this is not cutting edge. Hopefully, Seng Song continues to develop that because one day Amazon might bring their supermarkets to Singapore or Alibaba might bring her Hermes to Singapore. We don't know. So Seng Song needs to continuously evolve but they are indeed in a very defensive industry. That's the beauty of it. At current share price of $1.60 plus, cents, I think Seng Song is fairly valued and so is this next company on the list. Number two on the list is again another household name that you definitely know, DBS. I've chosen DBS to represent the three banks in Singapore. It could have been UOB or OCBC. Not much of difference. They track each other quite closely. But I've chosen DBS because they're the biggest of the three banks and I think they're slightly more willing to deliver more blockchain and crypto solutions in the future years ahead. But let's look at the share price of DBS. 28% gain over the last 5 years, correct? Not just that, it is coupled with a 4.25% dividend yield right now. Wow, this dividend yield is tasty and DBS actually delivers this dividend on a quarterly basis. So if you are a retiree with a couple of hundred thousand dollars easily, you park a hundred thousand in DBS just to collect quarterly dividends, I think it's actually quite a decent idea. It's easy to believe that DBS will still be around, performing well in the next 10 years ahead. With that, let's move on to the third name on today's list of fairly valued companies. This company is something that I've covered extensively on this channel. 
I've gained massively from its share price run up. I've mentioned before I've sold it. And if you've been following me, you do know that this is another Propnex. Propnex is our biggest agency for real estate, undisputed leader. If you see in terms of share price, it's gained 194%. Wow, over the last five years. So if you always feel that Singapore stocks do not move, not true. They are just simply gems that are just not as well traded as maybe some of the US listed big tech firms. Not just that, Propnex is giving a very healthy dividend of 8 plus percent right now. So why did I actually sell out of Propnex or why do I actually feel it's at least fair value right now? I'm not too concerned about PropTech disrupting the whole property agency because I'm in sales. I do understand the value of a salesperson. Someone that's qualified can actually give and shorten the process and make the whole experience of transacting way easier and way smoother than what AI can deliver. We always need a human touch to close transactions. But my biggest concern is that property cycles could reach a peak and then eventually tail off. And if I have the assumption, I think it's logical for me to wait for a cooler period before re-entering and acquiring Propnex shares for the long term. With that, let's move on to the fourth name in this category of fairly valued companies whose shares have actually taken profit also, and this is none other than Hourglass. Our glass's share price has even been more astronomical. Five year return, take a guess, 212%. Wow. Singapore stocks to move, not true. There are small caps that actually have grown significant value. Now, the reason why our glass has grown so much is simply because luxury watches started to become trendy when there was so much liquidity in the market back a couple of years ago. My concern on why I feel it's probably fairly valued right now or overvalued even is that if there is indeed a recession, at least in US, luxury goods trade might start to taper off. That's why there are also cycles to its business sales. Having said that, the Hourglass is well run. It has been paying strong dividends over the years and you can see that previously it was only paying 2 cents in 2018, 3 cents in 2019 and right now they are paying more than 8 cents. So as always, when you buy a company for dividends, you want the dividends to grow. You're not buying a bond whereby it's a fixed coupon. That does make sense. And the whole art of investing is to find companies with a growing dividend because their operations are well done. As always, if you agree with that, help me smash the like button again and press on subscribe. Especially if you like content like this that helps you generate ideas that you can invest for long term and benefit with dividend investing. Now let's move on to the fifth name on the list of fairly valued companies. And this is definitely someone that you are familiar with also, Raffles Medical. Raffles Medical owns many GP chains and also Raffles Hospital. If you've been to Boogies, you've seen its latest development, which is a new tower built up right beside the old Raffles Hospital. So Raffles Medical is definitely expanding. Share price wise, it's generated 29% over the last five years and it's paid out one plus percent per annum. Now with the pandemic over, I do believe the dividend could grow maybe to two plus percent simply because Raffles Medical used to generate a lot of operational returns from medical tourism. Moving forward, I do expect medical tourism to fully resume. And not just that, China's reopening bodes well for Raffles Medical's growth because they're investing heavily into China. Medical business as always is an inflation-proof business. You can sleep well on it knowing that there'll always be people who need medical services. So coming to here, I've covered seven companies already. Two which I don't really like personally, SGX and Yang Zijiang. Five which I think are fairly valued. Sengxiong, DBS, The Hourglass, Propnex, and Raffles Medical Group. Let me know whether you agree with them or not, or you have a different opinion. Leave constructive comments in the sections below. Now let's move on to three other companies to round up our top 10 list. These three companies, in my opinion, are undervalued. And when they are undervalued, don't think that they will spring up tomorrow and make you big returns. It doesn't work like that. They are undervalued simply because the sentiment is poor. It might need some time, it might need a big kicker that's unexpected for share price to start revising upwards and seeing bullish analyst calls yet again. The first one that I have for you today is actually River Stone. Now for something to be undervalued, it definitely needs to tickle you a different way. You must disagree with it in some ways or another. But let me explain why I think Riverstone is likely undervalued. Riverstone makes gloves and we do know that healthcare gloves consumption may be dropping because the pandemic may be over already. But Riverstone has been actively investing into clean room gloves. Clean room gloves are used for example in semiconductor industry whereby through the pandemic they've kept their focus on. Clean room gloves gives it a strong margin and even if we believe that dividends will start to taper off as what we see in this chart over here, Fantastic search in dividends, correct? Clean Room Gloves business itself, in my opinion, will be able to bring it to better than 2019. 
One I'll be tracking for Riverstone is their revenue growth as compared to 2019. Let's write off 2020 and 2021 as one-off events. And moving forward, let's always compare 2023 with 2019. 2024 with 2019. We need to see a consistency in profits growth. And right now, it is still delivering that. As a rounding point, Riverstone has 644 million ringgit in cash, which is about 20% of its market cap. That's why it definitely deserves a valuation that is above its 2019 price. Take note of the hint, do some comparisons on yourself, and let's move on to the second name I have for you that could be undervalued. Whenever I cover palm oil stocks, this company's name is always in the comments section. Who we are talking about is now then Wilma International. Wilma is the biggest commodity conglomerate listed in Singapore. It has plantations which is upstream and also processing which is downstream. Wilma is not easy to understand because its business spans India, China, Indonesia, all over the place. And not just in palm oil but also in soybean oil and many other sectors. You can see the diversification as a strength and it has consistently delivered dividends that have been growing. 2018, it was 10.5 cents and right now it's 16.5 cents already. And in my bullish view of commodities moving forward, I do believe Wilma has every possibility to deliver even more operational profits and returns to you if you are a shareholder. So we've covered 9 names in total already and the last name that is on this list of undervalued companies. I left it to the last simply because I think it's probably one of the ones that you may find easy to get started investing in. This company has malls all over in Singapore, offices, towers all over in Singapore. Who I'm referring to is none other than Capital Land Investment Limited. Capital Land used to be a property developer, but last year it did a restructuring to privatize the property arm. This, in my opinion, is a smart move because market is rewarding asset lightness and recurring revenues. So if you are invested into Capital Land Investment Limited right now, what you're owning is a REIT manager. What you're owning is also some portions in REIT stake. And a lot of all this is recurring revenue. Right now, Capital Land Investment pays 4% dividend yield. And if China's reopening takes place smoothly, you can expect Capital Land Investment to start getting more operational profits out from that region. It is a name that you can sleep well on and you can be sure that you know government has a stake in it through Tomasic, and that's why I have it as my number one dividend company in Singapore right now that could possibly be undervalued. Hopefully you like this list that I've compiled specially for you. And as always, check out some previous tutorials that I have that touches on dividend investing. There will be definitely other names that you can consider before making your own investment moves. Invest prudently as always, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care as always, goodbye.